Virginia Tech and West Virginia, an interesting one uh, coming up on Sunday night from FedEx Field, uh, the home of the Redskins. I know that you're high in West Virginia, and a lot of folks are uh, because of Will Greer at quarterback and, and some playmakers on both sides of the football. Yeah, this is going to be some strength on strength right here with the Virginia Tech's defense versus West Virginia's offense. And and West Virginia lost some playmakers, and, and they have – you know, Will Greer at quarterback, who should be better, but he's going to have to develop some different receivers. They have, obviously, uh, Crawford at running back, so he should do very well. If they can open up some holes for him, you know, th their offense won't be an issue. It'll be the defensive side. They replace a lot of talent this year that they had last year. They like the guys that they have. They're in Morgantown. They have some freshmen that they're very high on. If you If you listen to people around the program, they think they're a playoff team. I, I don't I have them just kind of under Oklahoma State and, and Oklahoma there, you know, in Kansas kind of in the Kansas State area, dark horse for the Big 12. But if they think they're good that they're gonna have to play this Virginia Tech game, they're the underdog. They're gonna have to play with that chip on their shoulder and go out and get a win for a gritty win for the Big 12 for sure. Yeah, this Virginia Tech team, of course, made it to the ACC championship game last year and gave Clemson fits in the fourth quarter, got within a score a number of times. But the offensive personnel that made a difference on that team are gone. Gerard Evans moves on to the NFL, probably not the best move for him. But uh, so he's a playmaker on offense that would have been there that probably would have turned the tide in terms of expectations for a division championship repeat against Miami. Uh, they lost their two best wide receivers in Bucky Hodges and Isaiah Ford also moving on to the NFL. So Josh Jackson is a dual threat guy for Virginia Tech uh, who has no game experience and uh, the Hokies will be stout on defense, we would expect, as they typically are. I am surprised at the four-and-a-half-point spread. I think this is pretty much toss it up, pick them. It's a neutral site, although Virginia Tech's a little bit closer to home, but uh, basically a neutral site, and, and I just think this one's up in the air. Will Greer, in his six games at Florida, made a difference. So the Gators have been awful for the most part on offense since Urban Meyer left, but for that six-game window, Will Greer didn't set the world on fire. Don't think Sam Darnold, but he stabilized the position, made the right reads, the right decisions, uh, aired it out well, and they put points on the board, and a couple of those six games were against solid SEC opponents, if not really good SEC teams. And uh, so Will Greer could make a difference for West Virginia, and he definitely has the experience factor actor over his counterpart with the Hokies. Yes, definitely. They, I mean, if you, everybody around Morgantown is extremely high on Will Greer, what they've seen out of him in practice in the spring and fall camp, that they're, they are absolutely enamored by him. They, they think he can be the best quarterback in the big 12. And you, it's kind of comes across as crazy when you have Mason Rudolph and Baker Mayfield also in the conference, but that's what they feel like they have in Will Greer. Um, and, and the defense on, the, on West Virginia is going to be a little underrated. You know, Tony Gibson has done very, very well there. He's going to have an aggressive defense. They're going to try to keep pressure on Virginia Tech, especially with you know, the, the Hokies replacing some offensive key talent there. So that, that, that could be a difference maker in the game. But I'm with you. I, I agree. It's a toss-up. I can't. I'm going to pick West Virginia because I think they can get the win, but I definitely don't see Virginia Tech as a, a four-and-a-half-point favorite or whatever it is right now. So I, I agree it's a toss-up game, and I'm, I'm definitely going to go with the Mountaineers there. I think that's Vegas being high on the ACC and thinking, okay, a similar Miami team, similar in seeding performance last year, not necessarily this year, versus Virginia Tech, uh, took out West Virginia fairly easily in the second half of like a 17-point win. And uh, I think that's what the connection is there. Otherwise, I think the personnel is very comparable. And if anything, as we point out, West Virginia has a decided edge at least going into the game we'll see what josh jackson has uh, obviously if you win a quarterback battle at uh, the likes of a virginia tech you have talent and, and ability and, and he could grasp it quickly but uh, will greer the known factor at quarterback versus his counterpart all right uh, west virginia virginia tech on a sunday night highlights the big 12 schedule as uh week two will also uh present uh, some challenges for the Big 12, but uh, I look at the overall uh, out-of-conference schedule and think the conference can uh, fare rather well, but it starts with Tulsa and Oklahoma State on Thursday night.
All right, Chris Ross from uh, the Land Grand Gauntlet joining us to break down the Big 12. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Can't wait. Football two days.